My name is Tom Golly, and I do research and teach on the fields related to second language education at the University of Tokyo. Um, today is December 5th, 2022, and uh, it's five days, six days uh, since the company OpenAI released its chat GPT so uh, software. And so um, I would like to show that a brief demonstration of that software and talk about the implications of this new software and similar um, large language models for the field of language education. So first of all, ChatGPT is uh, now being released in kind of a beta version where the um, people who have uh, OpenAI accounts can test it. Apparently OpenAI is, wants to evaluate it for its safety in terms of ethical and related issues. But um, many hundreds, thousands of people around the world seem to be using it right now. What it can do is you input some text and you can ask questions or make a comment, click return, and then you get a response. And the questions can be about history, they can be about um, travel, they can be about technical subjects. Um, and the software is interactive. So if you get an answer from the, from the software, you can reply to that and respond to that, um, and carry on conversations to some extent. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, it's, there are gaps in its knowledge. Um, it's not great at calculation, apparently. But um, in the case of, for example, asking it to write a story, to write a short essay, it produces what are close to perfect texts. Um, it's also possible to give the prompts uh, in another language. So I've tested it with Japanese. I'll give a prompt in Japanese and ask it to reply in English, and it will do that. So for example, you can ask it to produce a three-paragraph essay on the origins of the Second World War, and it produces in just a couple of seconds that essay. Um, and better than any essay produced by any student I've ever taught at the top university in Japan. So uh, this has a lot of implications for the field of language education, implications that I at least do not yet grasp. So about five years ago, six years ago, there was a similar revolution um, when Google's machine translation software um, adopted a new neural network approach to um, doing uh, online translations. And so suddenly, especially between languages like Japanese and English, machine translation became usable in many cases. And so, for example, learners of a language could use it to write their homework. They could also use it to, to find out what a text in a foreign language meant with pretty good accuracy. Um, and it can also be used in practical um, situations. But this chat GPT goes beyond that. It's, uh, it's not just translating. By the way, it can translate, is, is able to translate as well in the tests I've done. But it goes beyond that in actually producing texts and being interactive in the text. Right now, uh, the interface at OpenAI is only for written text, um, but I think it's pretty obvious that this or similar software will soon become available in spoken form as well too. Much, um, voice recognition and speech synthesis are very, very good now. So I, I, in, within months, I expect we'll be seeing some very high quality voice interactive software where you can talk to this bot. And it seems very, very close to being a real person. And I'm sure there will be cases where, where um, software developers will create characters with persistent personalities so that one could go back and converse with the same person again and again. This software is very close to passing or has already passed the Turing test, the test proposed by Alan Turing many years ago that, to say that a, artificial intelligence has been achieved when you can't tell the difference between a computer and a, and a human being. Um, and so that's going to be happening soon, um, very, very soon. So the implications of this software go far beyond the field of language education. Um, and those discussions are starting, they've been going on for some time, but they've been kickstarted within the last few days by the arrival of JetGPT. 
So I made this video to encourage people, at least in the field of language education, to take this move seriously. The response to the rapid improvement of machine translation, starting in late 2016, was slow. It took a while for educators to start taking it seriously. I think they needed to know that their students were using it before they realized that they need to adapt their education. Much education still has not adapted to it. At least here in Japan, education policy, the policy of the government, the educational policy of the government has not yet responded to it at all. And so this next leap in artificial intelligence shown by chat GPT raises even bigger issues about why and how people use language and why and how people learn and teach other languages. So um, I made this video to encourage discussion and dialogue. Um, if you, I talked to a group of graduate students today and um, they had not heard of this. Of course, it was only released five days ago, but um, they, were, they were blown away by it when I, when I demonstrated it to them. And I'm sure almost everybody is. And so I encourage you to get familiar with the, the software and read the discussions that are going on, on. Right now, they're going on in places like Hacker News and Reddit and Twitter, uh, Mastodon. Um, I imagine they're going, they're going, taking place other places as well, too. Um, if you're an, an educator in the field of second language education, talk to your colleagues about it, talk to your other educators about it, talk to your students about it, and contemplate on what it means. Um, I can't predict what, what's going to happen, but the software is being developed very, very quickly. And it's, we can imagine other rapid advances soon, like the, the you know, spoken interface, which I mentioned. And so we, we, it's better to be <laughs> ready earlier than later to deal with it. So thank you very much for listening.